Howdy, this is Jay Shell for UG and AODL. Welcome back to my channel of various things keeping this old hermit alive. This is a photography one. Today I'm talking about making kind of a custom everyday carry camera that is a bit quirky and lo-fi using the Fujifilm XM1 and the 7 Artisans 18mm 6.3 UFO lens. So, the point of this is just kind of wanting a camera that can be put into smaller pockets as compared to something like my main cameras, my beloved X-Pro 1 and 2. These cameras feel right. These are just amazing cameras in a very classic size, but a bit big to carry around all the time. The XM1 is the smallest X-Trans interchangeable lens camera I could find. It is about the size of the Fujifilm X70, a tiny bit, a few millimeters wider and a few millimeters taller, but less than five millimeters either way. And this is my Panasonic Lumix LX7, which I've had for almost a decade. This has been kind of my premium point-and-shoot. This, we get about the same size, a tiny bit wider. So kind of in that Ricoh GR territory, Fujifilm X70 territory. But uh, cheap. You can get this camera body for less than $200 US or up to, I see a lot of listings, early September 2022 with uh, the 16 to 50 XC lens, and those are still around $260. This lens is $60. So if you get this camera body and this lens, you can get this set up for under $300 fairly easily. If you go with the XA1 with a Bayer sensor instead of X Trans, you get basically the same camera, uh, and I think those can be those. Can definitely be had for below $180 US. For me the point of this is to kind of have something like my Lomographic LCA and I have another video discussing this camera body with the Lomo 32 uh, millimeter Minotaur lens and I discuss and I'll repeat here kind of the Lomographic principles of always have your camera with you don't think just shoot shoot from the hip and kind of trust that the picture will come out interesting it won't come out bad i'm not sure if that's the right way to put it but you know the lens will kind of add something interesting to it that it will not just look the same as any other photo and this lens is definitely like that you know, it doesn't have room to do much. It actually has got glass elements inside. It is not a fisheye. It is a usable, very wide angle lens. It's an 18 millimeter lens and the Fujifilm X70 camera was 18.5. So that these are kind of 27, 28 millimeter full frame equivalent. Again, I think that's the Ricoh GR3 and that seems to be, I like this, wide open. And especially when you're not, don't have a viewfinder, this is a great angle for pointing, snapping, shooting. So cheap, fun, that's just kind of the, the main goal of it. Uh, some variations of this could be getting like the Panasonic Lumix GX1. You can get those bodies for around a hundred bucks these days and this lens is available on Micro Four Thirds. So instead of spending five or six hundred dollars on a on something like the X70 or even the X30s are still going for quite a bit. We can get something with interchangeable lenses and 
you're not stuck with this, you can switch to anything else, but you also have something you can pocket. Uh, the XM1 and the XA1 and the XA series are kind of very much targeted at an entry-level audience and they have fewer features than the kind of the full Fujifilm X cameras. But that's kind of a good thing. A, restrictions breed creativity, simplicity is nice, and this will never really compete against even the X Pro One, which is, you know, the same sensor and everything. This will only win because of size. This is for, to be pocketable, take everywhere. This is meant to be a secondary or tertiary camera when going out shooting and especially when traveling. I did this, I put this lens on the X Pro One to bring to Vegas because I didn't have room for a, a full X Trans setup because I had all of these other film cameras with me, but I could squeeze that camera in, and so I just put this lens on it. This would have been a better choice for that kind of situation. Again, just because of size, I would have used it more. I would have kept this in a pocket, whereas the X Pro One would kind of have to come in and out of the backpack. Uh, so that's just kind of my quick thoughts on how to make a quirky lo fi everyday camera out of an old, small, compact, kind of weird camera body from Fuji. Let's look at some pictures really quick. Um, so I generally have this set up in that's lone custom mode I have set to black and white. Uh, dramatic kind of monochrome recipe from Fuji X Weekly that was made just for the X-M1. This has less film simulation options than the X-Pro1 and less monochrome options. You don't get the red, yellow, green filter options. So he made a recipe to work kind of within the constraints of this and I like how it looks. So let's run through some pictures real quick and I'll talk about them starting with this selfie just pointing the camera at me. This really reminds me of like some selfies I got off of my Holga uh, way back in the day. Especially my the Holga that had the flash before the batteries melted into it. So a bit soft at this close up. People have various talks about filmic look. This feels very nostalgic for me. Next one, looking at just the tire shop and some skyscrapers, but this camera, this lens is sharp, uh, far out and at infinity which a lot of these cheap lenses are not, and you kind of have to put them to infinity and dial them back a tiny bit. This, well, there's no focus settings on it, but it is good that it is sharp all the way through, because that makes it easier to just take this out, turn it on, and snap. Here's a couple of shots done like that, in black and white. City people, city people. We get to this steeple, just liked the light that was falling across it, and I liked the light that is kind of bouncing off the top there. This lens picks up lens flares in very interesting ways, possibly because it has no uh, lens cap, it might be easy to smudge and that kind of adds to kind of the behavior of light coming into it a bit hard. Here are a couple of other just shooting kind of right into a reflection of the sun. Now we're in color and we see that my sensor needs cleaning. But again, these skyscrapers are really clear and these lens flares kind of interesting. Uh, just some old apartments. Uh, more skyscrapers. Now with the blue sky rich colors, possibly because I used to live at this spot uh, almost 20 years ago now and would shoot there with film. This is making me nostalgic, especially with the uh, bits of vignetting. 
but the skyline here is different than what it was back then. Tire shop. Uh, just kind of wanted the colors and the dirt and the grime, and this lens caught them just fine. You get this little red truck in front of the tire shop, and just kind of wanting to show the red. And speaking of red, this red car really pops. It reminds me of a picture I took of a toy car at a model train setup many years ago. And so this sometimes looks a bit toy-like, especially as it's not quite a tilt shift thing going on, but the car seems really in focus and the uh, parking signs out right there next to it are a little soft. Next we have just some construction and we really see this sky, we see that uh, sensor dirt, but this vignetting sky from the light blue to the dark blue, I love this. You know, Definitely in the Lomography vignetting look, there are a lot of people who would over-process their pictures and take that look over the top. I do not like that, but I do like this. This feels, again, this is kind of my definition of filmic, film-like look, because this is, uh, especially in the early to mid-2000s, a lot of what I shot. And this is also interesting to me because that used to be the parking lot of our offices. It's, we haven't been in that building for 20 years. The building with the yellow stripe behind it, that's brand new. So this changing city uh, has kind of inspired me to take out cameras like this again because I've liked looking back at my old Lomo pictures and kind of seeing now what has changed. And another decade from now, it will be interesting to look at these. Uh, now to this parking lot, another, this used to be really, really cool old apartment buildings. Uh, they just tore them down this summer, and there will be some new gaudy monstrosity there, like that building behind it. That is new in the last couple of years, but I also like the blue of those uh, concrete barricades. The X-Trans 1 just really seems to do well with that color. Now just some more apartment buildings. An old walkway. I used to live here too, and my office is still near here, so it's a... Uh... But this again is reminding me a lot of uh, photos I took around 2005. And uh, I remember coming down here in the mid-90s uh, when I was at in my late teens and I really wish I had pictures from back then before a lot of this got developed out but I do not I also wish I had more pictures of people I love from back then but maybe that's why here as I become an old hermit I'm starting to take a lot of pictures again even if it's of dumb things like uh, water meters, but I like this crap. Don't know why, and I don't care. And here's some pretty flowers, just to kind of finish it up. Uh, just kind of showing this, catching the colors. It gets all of the greens. It's, it feels a little overexposed. The, the focus is a bit weird across this whole picture, but it's not bad. I just I like it. So those are my quick and then rambling thoughts about uh, using the XM1 in this little lens as an everyday carry to just shoot from the hip and catch dumb weird things where you might not have a full camera and you want something funner and more interesting than your phone.